everybody, and welcome to the Ultimate Job Search and Career Podcast with yours truly, Bill, the company's expert. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about a couple of things. First off, we're going to talk about how to introduce yourself in an interview. So we're going to dive into that. And then after that, we're going to take a question from one of my many awesome viewers slash listeners who sent in the question asking about, should I accept a salary counter offer? So we're going to be talking a little bit about salary, salary negotiation and compensation. Uh, or if you're in the situation where you're quitting a job, you've given notice, but your employer uh, comes back to you with a counter offer and says, we'll pay you more money. And maybe to complicate that, You've had offers from other companies. Okay, how does that complicate things and what you should do? So we're going to talk about that. Uh, <clears throat> but first, before we get into that, I just want to say that you are awesome for listening to this. You have shown the desire for self-improvement and to want to prepare and do better. And for that reason, you're awesome. And you have impeccable taste, I've got to say. I didn't know you had such good taste. That should make you feel better. Okay, you should be proud. Now... We're going to talk a little bit about our first topic for today, which is how to introduce yourself in an interview. Okay. Uh, and I've just got to set this up a little bit. Um, first of all, I want to say that there's many interesting people in this world and they have different ways of doing things. Okay. If you want to know exactly the weirdness of some people out there. Okay. There's many ways to verify this. Not everybody thinks the same way. You know, if you really want to test it, Take my advice, dress up in a Catholic archbishop's outfit and go hitchhiking and see the kind of people that pick you up. That will inform you of just how weird some people are out there. OK, and as a result, many people have different approaches to doing this, which is introducing yourself in a job interview. Now, the other thing I want to kind of set up here is we're not talking about the situation where you sit down at the table in a job interview and they start the interview, usually with some form of tell me about yourself or introduce yourself. Uh, we're not talking about that. We're talking about once you get to the job interview, when you're first introduced to the interviewer or interviewers, OK, and anybody that uh, you should encounter. What do you say to them? You know, some people are very nervous about this. Okay. In uh, the old days, meaning before 2020, uh, if you were doing a job interview, usually that meant you were doing a face to face job interview. It wasn't virtual. It wasn't over the computer uh, or over your phone. This was real. Um, and you would actually travel to the venue. You would go into a building and you would talk to some people and say why you were there. And uh, you would at some point be introduced to the people who are going to be interviewing you. And all of this is before the interview started. So you're interacting with them before the official start of the interview. Okay. Now, when we do virtual job interviews, this does happen also, okay, usually before the first official question, you've you've already had some interaction with the interviewer or interviewers, and it's at that point that you've made your first impression. So this is very important to get right, okay? So um, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your first interactions with the people that are going to be evaluating you. OK, and that usually occurs before the the interview has officially begun. OK, so let's be clear about what we're talking about here there. It's their introduction to you and it's your introduction to them. OK, now, having said that, <clears throat> let's dive into this actual question here. Um, OK, so listen. If you feel nervous doing this. If you feel like you're out of your comfort zone, if you feel that, uh, you know, the stakes are high and the pressure's on and this results in you not quite being at your best, you know, you don't seem to be able to speak freely. You end up not doing so well when you uh, act extemporaneously, which means just kind of off the cuff without being rehearsed. OK, if that's you, you're normal. OK, you're a normal human being. Job interviews are highly artificial uh, encounters. People tend to not be natural at all. People tend to not be at their best. OK, this is perfectly normal. And if you feel this, you are normal. Now, 
That is especially true if you happen to be just starting off in your career. And when I say that, I mean if you're in your 20s, okay? Um, <clears throat> your teens or your 20s, then this would be you. You have uh, less experience than you're going to have in your lifetime at doing this, and we tend to not be masters at things that we've, we're just starting out doing. We tend to get better at things over time, okay? And this is no exception, okay? And you, if you are concerned about this, I'm here to tell you that you will probably get very, very good at this, okay, before the before this whole game is over. You will probably be a master of this by the end of your career, okay? Now, this is also true of people that, you know, you might not be in your 20s, but you haven't really had much experience being in job interviews. You might have... Uh, gotten a job very easily right out of school. You might've stayed there for many years, you know, this happens, right? And as a result, you know, you're kind of a novice when it comes to the whole process of job search and doing interviews and whatnot. Okay. So if this is you, don't feel bad. We're all starting from the same place. Everybody starts here. I don't care if you're an extrovert. I don't care if you're an introvert. Everybody feels nervous to a degree. And uh, the same sort of techniques apply to everyone, okay, to improve. So the first thing I'm going to say is the way to improve this is to be prepared, okay? Don't try and wing it. Try and rehearse a little bit, especially if you're nervous at doing this. Try and rehearse what you're going to say. And then when you get to the uh, actual interview and you're in the moment, Okay, your brain kind of shuts off with these things and you can't think. You're just on autopilot and you will do the thing that you have rehearsed. It will come naturally without you having to think about it. Okay, that is a big help. When you're just starting off, this is how we do things. It's called heuristics. Okay, we rehearse stuff. We rehearse stuff till the point where it's automatic. And then in the moment, the only thing that you do will be what's automatic and if you've rehearsed it, you've engineered it so that it's good, then you will be good, okay? So if you're having some issues with this, that's the first thing to know, okay? Now, secondly, when we're talking about introductions, when you sit down at a table with a bunch of strangers and you're kind of nervous, you know, and uh, you're out of your comfort zone, everybody's dressed all fancy, you're dressed fancier than you normally would dress, you're in a weird, fancy place, and, uh, you know, or you're doing this virtually and you're at home, but, you know, at least from the waist up, you're dressed fancier and, uh, you know, you don't feel, you don't feel quite comfortable with the whole, uh, interaction. You're absolutely right. Like I keep saying, job interviews are highly unnatural interactions with people. I don't think even if you work in sales or marketing, you will never really encounter a social situation as unnatural and forced as a job interview. You know, even if you're undergoing some kind of uh, high level negotiation or something, you know, it still doesn't seem as artificial as a job interview, at least the way they're conducted in a lot of large organizations where it's a very formal affair. Okay. So you got a couple of conflicting forces here. On one hand, you got people like myself that say you should be likable. Okay, you should try and be personable um, and make a very positive impression on a personal level. Okay, on the other hand, you might have forces that say, no, you should act like a highly talented person. You should act like they're recruiting you. And as a result, you should be more aloof and, you know, a little more distant. Okay, so you've got some conflicting forces here. Let's go through this. Now. I'm going to come right out and say it. I always advocate for people trying to be as likable as possible. Okay. Trying to be as personable as possible, trying to be as accommodating as possible. Okay. Uh, that in my experience, in many situations over many years and many levels is the way to do this. If you want people to like you, you should try to be likable. Okay. If you are going to play the card where you feel that, no, um, I shouldn't be too personable. I shouldn't be too ingratiating because I want them to believe that I'm some kind of superstar rainmaker, some big shot that's highly talented, highly sought after, and that they should get down on their knees and beg me to join their organization. If that's the image you're trying to pull, 
if they've never heard of you before this interview, uh, I don't think that's going to work. That's just my opinion based on my experiences. That doesn't, it does things don't work like that. They kind of do sometimes in the movies. And I think that's what throws everyone off. It also kind of works that way in a few high profile companies that you might've seen on the news because they're involved in a big scandal, right? This whole Darwinian kind of alpha type, uh, people that run these organizations and they build the organization in their image. You know, they want people to be alphas. They want people to be uh, the opposite of likable. You know, I'm the boss. Therefore, I'm the rudest, biggest jerk in the entire organization. You know, those kind of organizations. You've heard of them. We've all heard of them, right? Um, I'm definitely in the camp that says that doesn't work. And I think that uh, most evidence demonstrates this. You don't have to take my word for it. Um, And if you don't really agree with me or not coming with me on this. Um, I welcome you to go out and try that approach and see how successful it actually is. Um, yes. And I've worked in some very tough industries. I've worked in the railroad and I've worked in, uh, you know, heavy industry and things like this. And yeah, you know, you're dealing with, with a lot of, um, people that, uh, let's put it this way. Their social graces aren't exactly, uh, uh, that well developed. Okay. But, Bottom line is that being likable is the way to go. The more people like you, the more chance they have of hiring you. That's a, that's a general trend. And once again, uh, you don't have to take my word for that either. Go out and, uh, verify that. Okay. That's something that's, uh, that's been shown in data. Okay. The more likable candidates tend to be the ones that they hire. Okay. So be likable. Okay. This is what gets you hired. Now, how do you do that? Well, first of all, you smile. You don't have a big scowl on your face. You don't look deathly nervous and worried and panicked. You try and look comfortable. I know this is a bit of a stretch in an uncomfortable situation, but you try and look comfortable, try and look happy. You know, you don't have to smile ear to ear showing all your teeth, but you know, don't look sad. Don't look angry. Don't look uncomfortable. Just look pleasant. Okay. And be accommodating. If somebody says, would you mind doing this? The default answer should be sure. Yeah, no problem. You know, could you sit over there? Would that be better? It's like, sure, not a problem. You know, accommodating. Okay. Um, if somebody does something for you or asks, uh, something about you that shows concern, you say, thank you. You know, I appreciate that. You know, this helps you to uh, be likable, okay, to be regarded as somebody that they want to talk to. Okay, so number one, being likable. Be prepared, be likable. Now, let's talk about some of the mechanics of this here. Um, If they say, thank you for coming or thank you for doing this interview, you say, you say, well, thank you for having me. You know, I appreciate the chance to interview, you know, something like that. Okay, you reciprocate thanks If they say thanks to you for something, you say thanks to them for precisely what they're doing. Thank you for giving me this chance. You know, I'm just glad to be here. You know, that goes a long way to be likable. Okay. Some other uh, kind of mechanics of this. If they say it's very nice to meet you, you say the same thing. Thank you. It's very nice to meet you also. Um, And then that's what you say at the beginning when you're being introduced to people at the end of the encounter, at the end of the interview. Okay, you say, it's very nice to have met you. Okay, that's how that works. It's very nice to meet you. And then at the end, it's very nice to have met you. Okay. Um, Now, if someone's just asking who you are and what you're doing here, uh, maybe a receptionist, if this was the old days before 2020, if you went down to a physical interview um, and you show up at the front desk, you say, hi, my name is X. My name is whatever your name is. Don't say your name is X. If your name is not X, you know what I'm talking about. My name is X and I'm here for the interview. Yeah, it's a very easy, compact way of saying it. Okay. Or if it's a larger organization, you say, hi, my name is X and I have an interview scheduled with this person, you know, or if you don't know the person, I have an interview scheduled today with, uh, for this position. Okay. would be something that for sure you would know, you would know what the job title is for. And then they know, ah, okay, I know exactly who you are and what you're doing here and how to process you. Okay. Look pleasant. Smile when you're speaking. 
Okay, sometimes you got to practice this. For people that, uh, you know, they haven't learned this over time, uh, this goes a long way. You know, if you look pretty gruff, you know, and you're not very comfortable, you say, yeah, I'm here for this interview. You know, you can tell I'm not really as warm and personal, but you say, hi, yeah, I'm here for this interview. You know, it's a little bit more upbeat. And the reason why you're doing this is because you're getting a different response from the other person now they want to deal with you now they feel that dealing with you will be more pleasant okay and that's why we're doing this when you talk to somebody look them in the eyes okay now there are some uh cultures around the world where this is regarded as um not the thing you would do okay um but for professional encounters in uh the culture of the west you look someone in the eyes doesn't matter what gender you are doesn't matter what age you are uh it's not regarded as rude to do this in fact it's regarded as personable what that's saying is that uh, i am paying attention to this i'm paying attention to you and i'm taking this seriously that's what that signifies so in some cultures where you're not used to this in gen in the larger society in a professional situation, this is something that you would want to do, okay? So you look the person in the eyes when you're talking, you know, when you're saying, yes, I'm here for the interview and uh, it's been scheduled with this person for today, something like that, okay? Um, and try to be personable. Try to talk to somebody like they're your friend. I know that sounds weird because they're not your friend. They're in a, uh, some kind of business acquaintance, but this is very important, okay? Okay. Um, and don't be overly formal. That would be my, my advice, okay? Every level. I don't care if you're going for an executive job. Don't be overly formal. Don't say, if, if, if they introduce you to five people, don't say, hi, team. You know, just say, hello, it's very nice to meet you all. You know, something like that. Like, as if you were talking to people, uh, you know, when you're not at work, when you're just talking to a bunch of people at the bus stop or, you know, at a bar or, you know, wherever you go and any other kind of in a school, uh, you know, that's the kind of vibe you want to have. You don't want to have this. Oh, you need to talk to me in legalese because I'm this person way up here. That, that doesn't really work. I don't care who you are. Even celebrities that try and pull that don't succeed in making the other person want to deal with them. Okay. That's the reality. Now, how can we work on this? Well, practice introducing yourself by meeting people. Okay. You can do this one-on-one -on -one by yourself at home, but the greatest way to rehearse this and to get good at it is simply to practice, introduce yourself, uh, introducing yourself to other people. Okay. So if you go to school or you go to your job, and you go to, I don't know, a common area, maybe like the cafeteria or a place where, you know, people congregate, people meet, you know, maybe you're standing in line waiting for food or waiting for whatever, waiting for something to start, you know, just practice introducing yourself. You just said, Hey, I'm Bill. You know, do you, do you know if this is uh, if the doors are opening soon or do you know? You know, if they're going to be serving the same thing they've served yesterday for, you know, <laughs> whatever the uh, cafeteria or something, practice this practice makes perfect. And if you do this, you will very quickly get good at it and you will get a lot of self-confidence because you see how well it goes. You see the other person like, you know, responding to you and you see them smiling at you and telling you the thing you're asking about and being happy to talk to you. This does amazing things for people's self-confidence and it convinces people that they're good at doing this even if you're an introvert even if you don't have a lot of uh, experience you know in these social situations striking up conversations with strangers and stuff you can amaze yourself at how good you can be doing this okay um if you are the type of person that speaks quietly some people they speak very quietly um if this is something you know about yourself, practice speaking a little bit louder, okay? Uh, you need to speak loud enough that people can hear you easily, but you don't want to yell. <laughs> you don't want to speak, uh, you know, suspiciously loud, right? Um, but if you know this about yourself, 
work on it. Okay. This is going to make you more personal. What's going to make you, it's going to make people want to interact with you. It's not going to raise any red flags when you talk to somebody and you say, Oh, my name is Bill. And I'm here to, you know, for the interview. And they're like, what? <laughs> right. You know, um, that kind of is a barrier to people wanting to interact with you. Okay. Now, another super important thing to remember. Okay. When you introduce yourself, it is not about you. It is about them. Okay, that sounds weird. Let me explain. Um, when you interact with somebody, it doesn't matter really about what you want to say and want, what you want them to understand. Okay, a lot of times. Certainly not in this situation. This is about how you make the other person feel. Okay? So, if you talk to somebody um, when you're introducing yourself... And you make them feel respected. You make them feel validated. You make them feel important. Okay. That really works wonders because they will immediately like you. They will immediately want to interact with you more. Okay. And this is a good thing, especially in a job interview where you're essentially trying to put yourself forward as the person they should pick of all the people that they're going to be talking to. You want them to pick you. Okay, so you want them to feel that, yes, I enjoy talking to that person. They make me feel good about myself, right? Okay, so for the, for the people that really want me to get specific, let's talk about this further, okay? So you want them to feel good. So when they say, hi, you know, uh, are you here for the interview? And you say, yes, yes, I, I am here for the interview. Are you giving the interview? And they say, uh, yeah, I'm actually interviewing. You say, oh, great. You know, this is, you know, this is awesome. And, uh, you know, it's very, very nice to meet you. You know, something like that. Uh, you know, you're showing respect. You're making them feel important. You're making them feel validated. You know, they're, they're a legitimate person. Maybe you don't know. They could be the junior HR person that just was hired two weeks ago. And they still don't feel comfortable in their role. They don't feel comfortable at that organization. But here's a candidate that's making them feel like, wow, you know, you're legitimate, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm showing you respect. I'm making you feel important. So, so that's what I'm talking about. It's like when you talk to somebody, you talk to them like they're important and like they're like, like you respect them. Okay. And you do respect them. You always go in with that. Uh, until people give you a reason not to, right? Uh, so, so that's a key thing to remember. When you interact with somebody, it's not about you. It's not about what you want to say. It's about them. It's about how you want them to feel. You want them to like you. You want them to want to interact with you more. Because if you can make all your interviewers feel like that, they'll pick you for the job. Even if there are technically other candidates more qualified than you, they will pick you because you're the one that they really want to work with. And they will overlook a lot of things if they really want to work with you. Okay. The other part of this is that if you're called for an interview, you should know this already. If you're called for an interview, then that means that they feel based on your resume and your job application that you are qualified. The only question is, what do you like as a person? Okay. Okay. So that's why this is super important in a job interview type situation. Okay. Now, if you can do this, okay, if you can introduce yourself clearly in a way that makes people like you, they want to deal with you further. Okay. This can segue into other things. It can segue into striking up a conversation with somebody. Okay. A conversation that they want to have. They're not answering your questions because they're being polite. They're talking to you because they want to talk to you. They feel like, hey, here's a person that is genuinely interested in me and, you know, is asking me stuff that I love talking about. Nobody ever asks me about this and this and this. I love talking about those things, but nobody ever talks to me about it. You know, it's like, here's finally my chance to talk about something that I enjoy talking about, right? People like talking about themselves, right? That's a well-known thing. You ask somebody about themselves, themselves. And they will enjoy answering <laughs> your question, you know. Um, it can also segue into things like informational interviews, okay? This is a little bit more advanced. This is where you book a meeting with somebody and you talk to them. 
And uh, the purpose is to get information. It's not to get a job. It's not a job interview. It's an informational interview. You know, you book a meeting with someone you don't know, some professional in some organization or some industry, and you ask them about their industry or their career or their organization because you want to learn about those things, right? Okay, so being able to introduce yourself really well in a way that they think, oh, this is going to be a pleasant conversation. And you know what? I like this person. That's very powerful. Okay, this is a very, very powerful life skill. Okay, the end result is the other person likes you. They've just met you, but already they know I like this person. You know, I like talking to them. Okay. When you talk to somebody, when you introduce yourself and you say, hi, yeah, my name is, my name is Bill. You know, and I just want to say, it's very, very nice to meet you, you know, and they believe this, you make them believe it. That has a big impact on people. They're thinking like, oh, this is awesome. You know, this is not going to be stressful at all. And, uh, I think this is going to go really well, you know, and that's what you want people to feel. Okay. This is very impactful, especially if it's followed up by a pleasant compliment, you know, Someone says, you know, are you here for the interview? You say, yeah, yeah, I am. You know, I'm Bill, you know, and they, and they say, oh, you know, my name is this. Oh, it's, that's great. It's very, very nice to meet you. You know, this place is awesome. I love the look of the, the office here, you know, or something like that. Some compliment, you know, or like, wow, you know, you sure are punctual. You know, you got it right on the tick. I'm supposed to be here at 11 and it's 11 on the tick. That's amazing. You guys are really professional. You know, I'm just making this up off the top of my head, but It's that kind of thing that goes a long way. So when you start having a job interview immediately afterwards, it tends to start well and go well. Okay. So that's what I want to say about introducing yourself uh, in an interview or before an interview. Uh, It's really the moment that you make a first impression. And this usually occurs before the interview officially starts. It's just this, this chit chat, this small talk, you know, that's when that occurs and it sets the vibe for the entire rest of the interaction. So it's very important to do this. The more you work on this, the better you'll get, the better you'll get, the more opportunities will come your way. So that's what I want to say about that. So hopefully that was helpful. If you do have any questions about this, uh, topic, let me know in the comments for this video. Um, if I can answer questions, you know, with only a few words, I will answer in the comments. If it's more of a, if it requires more of a detailed answer, I tend to try and answer those in my podcast. So, um, there you go. I appreciate that. And I hope that was helpful. Now, moving on, moving on. We got something that was sent in by a viewer here. And I'm just going to see if I can pull this up pretty quickly. Here we go. Um, this is a question. It was a comment that was, uh, put on one of my videos. This was my, uh, salary negotiation video. And this was asked by somebody called Avic Biswas, if I'm saying that correctly, Avic Biswas. And Avic says, question, I resigned serving my notice period now. The company asked me how much I want to stay. I gave them a lowball answer that is still higher than my current salary, but much lower than the offers I was getting because I did not have any official job offer at the time. Okay. The company hasn't given me any confirmation yet. Okay, so you're still working for your current employer, but you're working out your notice period. They obviously want you to stay because they have asked you how much money you need for you to stay. Uh, And you weren't getting any offers from any other companies at the time, but now it seems like you have. So Avic goes on. He says, uh, now I have an official offer, which is 60% higher than my lowball ask. How to approach this with my current company slash boss, who is expecting me to stay back if they meet my expectations. Okay, so I see what Avic is asking. They asked Avic how much he would need to stay. He gave them an answer, but things have changed. Avic has received an offer from another company that's offering him more money. So the question is, how does Avic resolve this with his existing employer? Okay. 
That's an excellent question, Avic. Thank you for sending that in. This is something that I know uh, other people are in this situation too. So let's talk about this. Now, um, here's the deal. There's a couple of couple of things I want to say right off the bat here. Uh, first off, if you are telling your current employer that you have received other offers from other organizations, okay, be careful. You can say that, but don't give them any identifying information. Don't tell them where the offer comes from. Don't give them any details about the offer that allows them to determine who it came from, which company. Okay, because it has been known that organizations can sabotage other offers. Okay, now I'm not going to say this happens most of the time, and I'm sure it doesn't, but it has been known that organizations, out of spite, because, you know, in effect, it feels like somebody is stealing their employee, they can sabotage the job offer that you've received from this new company. They can call the company and say, hey, you know, we just want you to know that this employee is terrible uh, and that uh, we're taking this action against them because they were drinking and stealing, you know, drinking on the job and stealing from the company. And, you know, uh, we've had a lot of personal problems with them. They can they can say all kinds of things. Now, is this um, sort of legitimate uh, highbrow behavior? Of course not. But it has been known. So why run the risk? You know, uh, you don't want to be in a situation where both of your options dry up. They don't want to keep you because they feel you're disloyal, but then they also sabotage your offer. Okay. Sabotage, sabotage, depending on your persuasion. Um, so that has been known. Okay. So this is, this is a valid point I want to make. Now it is possible to go back to your employer and say, look, you would ask me how much money I would need to stay, and I gave and I gave you a number, okay, or I or I gave you an answer. Uh, now I, I think you just need to be aware. Um, there has been some developments, and things have changed a little bit, and I've have received an offer, and I'm wondering if you can match it. Okay, that would be a legitimate move. You don't want to require them to exceed the offer, but you. It would be to your benefit to ask them if they can match the offer because anytime you switch jobs and you take a new job, there is a certain amount of risk. There is a small amount of risk. Okay. Um, it has been known that organizations uh, will make you a job offer, but then you then you accept, you quit your existing job to take the new job, and the offer is no longer valid. They have rescinded their job offer. Okay. Now, you don't want to be caught in that situation. Okay, so what I'm saying is that it's the expression, you know, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. You have an existing situation. You have a uh, job where it's a known quantity. It might not be perfect, but it's a known quantity. And uh, they're willing to pay you a certain amount of money to stay there. Okay, if someone wants you to jump to a new job, that involves additional risk. So you need to be compensated for that risk for it to be worth it. So the only situation where that makes sense is if you're going to make more money than your existing existing situation. Okay? So if your existing employer will match an offer, for most people, you know, that would be the optimum solution, the optimum option. Okay? Now... I'm fully aware that when people quit their jobs, there's other issues. There's usually personal issues. Maybe you can't stand your boss. Maybe uh, you can't stand your coworkers or the working conditions. Okay. Or maybe the uh, prospect of future employment, continued employment there is volatile. Okay. There, there's rumblings and rumors that they might be laying people off soon. You don't know. Okay, so there are other factors, okay, but all things being equal, if you have a job that uh, you already have, and it's just a matter of staying, okay, that is worth slightly less money than jumping to a new job. Okay, these are, this is sort of finance 101, right, risk versus return. So uh, you got to be aware of that. Now, if this were me, if I was in AVIX position here... And uh, now Avix says he resigned, but doesn't say quite what led to that. Like 
For example, if you're in a situation where you just cannot work there any longer without going insane, that's one thing. But if you resign because you're just kind of bored of your job and you think there's something better on the horizon, there are other opportunities, that's that's different, okay? So if that was the case, I would let my employer know that things have changed. I've, I've received uh, an offer. I would say more than one offer. I would say offers, okay? I've received more than one job offer, and uh, I'm wondering if you can match this, okay? And I wouldn't give them any more details. I wouldn't try and back it up uh, so it carries more weight by giving them more information. I wouldn't do that. You don't have to prove anything to them, okay? If this is a legitimate job offer, the only thing that matters, the only thing that's relevant is can they match it? And if they can match it, this is the, the assumption I'm going on is that you would prefer to stay with the devil you know, <laughs> right? Than jump to another situation that it might be worse for all you know, okay? It could evaporate. It might not even, you know, they might rescind their job offer or it might not work out, okay? So you're, you're taking that risk. Now, if you're in a situation where you absolutely can't work there any longer, like you, you're going to go insane, you're going to have mental health issues, uh, and it's a really, uh, you know, it's, it's that type of situation, then you're really in a situation where you have no options. The only option for you really is to take uh, this offer from a competing company. Okay. So you really don't have a big decision there. Okay. That's in effect your only valid option. Okay. Uh, if however, you would be willing to stay where you are, if they gave you more money to compensate for the job conditions or the, um, the stress that you undergo there, uh, then you have to, you have to weigh these options, right? So, so that, that's what I would say. The one kind of hard, fast thing I can say, depending on your situation is never under any circumstances, give them the details of your offer. Just say, can you match this? And it doesn't matter if they don't believe you. It doesn't matter if they don't believe you. If they say, well, no, we don't really believe that you have that offer. You're just making it up. Well, that's kind of a statement of what they think about you. If they think you're lying and they don't feel you're worth more than your current salary, that's telling. Okay, that informs you of what you must do. Um, if the evidence says that you are worth more, as evidenced by the fact that you're getting offers for more money, then that tells you what you need to do, right? Um, if you don't have an offer and you say, can you match this? And they say no. Well, you may believe you're worth more money, but there isn't any hard evidence that backs that up. I'm not saying it's false. I'm just saying there's nothing that backs that up and you don't really have options. Okay. In order to make decisions, you have to make decisions between options. And if you only have one valid option, there's not really much of a decision to make. Okay. So don't disclose details of your offer. Only thing you ask them is you say, look, I've, uh, there's been some developments, there's been some change, I've received some offers, and I'm wondering if you can match this. And that would affect my decision to stay. And then you hear what they say. And you don't go on any verbal promises, you wait till they draft a offer letter with that uh, new number. And if you believe that they will honor it, then, you, then that's a valid option. In the absence of any of that, then I'd say your only other valid option is your uh, company that's given you this offer. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, um, hopefully that answers your question, uh, Avic. Thank you very much for sending in this question. Uh, and thank you so much for everybody for listening this long, by the way. I just want to say that you are doubly awesome. I know I tend to go on, but hopefully it's uh, somewhat useful. And I just want to remind everyone that uh, if you do want to go deeper into how to get a job, I have a course called Get Hired. There's a link in the description. I've also made some videos on exactly what is in the course and how it works. So you can check those out. Um, in addition, I have just released a course called the $100 MBA. So if you want to learn business and you want to become more effective in your job, if you're any kind of supervisor or manager or entrepreneur, uh, this is an incredible bang for the buck. Uh, check out that course. Uh, there's a lot of details in it and I've mentioned a lot of it before. Um, 
But if you are thinking of doing a real MBA at a university, uh, this can give you a preview into what you'll be doing. And also it can help you do better by introducing the material to you in advance. Uh, that will help your grades. Uh, in addition, it'll help you be more effective in any type of management job. And if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to have a side hustle and uh, have some kind of entrepreneurial venture that makes you money on the side, and there's never been a better time in history to do that because now we have things like social networking that allow you to promote your stuff for essentially free other than your time. Um, if that's of any interest to you, if you have any ambitions in that direction, it can certainly help you make an entire kaleidoscope of rookie mistakes and costly business mistakes. If you want to be in business, it's best to know business. So check it out. Okay. If that interests you, thank you so much for listening. You guys are awesome. And I will see you on the next episode. Thanks and take care.